uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, so just before I, um, you know, I left, I actually sent Walter a quick email and asked him, you know, what should I talk about? Um, you know, I was looking for some suggestions for him, and he said, you know, drink two gin and tonics on the plane, um, you know, and a brilliant idea will come up. So, you know, I did exactly that, ordered two gin and tonics on the plane, and started thinking about ways that I'm helping to change the world. And so, you know, started looking for patterns, if there's ways that we can, you know, things that we can extract. <clears throat> and so, as I ordered a gin and tonic, I noticed that the flight attendant gave me sort of uh, funny looks. And so I realized, or I thought, you know, must be because of the mustache. Um, and that's when I realized that, um, you know, by growing this mustache, I'm actually helping to improve the world a little bit, regardless of what the flight attendant thought. Uh, and also, I also realized that, um, um, you know, that the fact that I'm growing this mustache is a little bit out of control. It's not something that I usually do, and yet I'm growing this mustache. And so the reason, of course, that I'm growing this mustache, and you might or might not know this, is because of Movember. Um, and so Movember is all about, you know, growing a mustache to help raise money for cancer research. Um, and, you know, for one, for one month, you know, for the duration of one month, men all around the world grow this mustache. And it started all the way back, well, not all the way back, but it started in 2004 in Australia with a couple of people and has now grown to, you know, cover hundreds of thousands of men all around the world. And in fact, just this year, they raised about $60 million, which is all going to be used for cancer research. Um, so all of this completely grassroots, no big media campaigns, no TV shows. It sort of just happened naturally. And so uh, Mo is slang for a mustache, and a Mo bro, as spelled on this guy's chin, is the, word, you know, of some, you know, is the word that we use for describing somebody participating um, in November. Um, of course, you know, women can participate too. <laughs> They're called uh, Mo Sistas. Um, and just like Mo Bros, they shave clean on the first day of November and, you know, start growing a beard or a moustache, sorry. Of course, most Mo Sistas can't actually grow a moustache, so instead they, you know, paint a little moustache on their finger, and that's how they go around and help raise money. So, um, you know, all in all, <laughs> you know, all in all, it's a very interesting global grassroots movement that just, you know, was started just a few years ago. And it's a little out of control, right? <laughs> but yet, I think it's helping to improve the world. And so by growing my mustache, I'm also helping to improve the world a little bit. You know, we raised some money doing so. Um, and then, of course, the other movement that I'm part of is Drupal. And so for those that don't know Drupal, um, you know, it's essentially free software that people can use to build websites. Um, you know, I started Drupal 10 years ago in my student dorm. This is me back in Antwerp. Uh, and as you can see, I had a little bit of a, a bro thing going, you know, back then as well. Um, but, you know, more importantly, I was sort of your average geek, and I'm, I still am. And so for the f first five years, I worked on Drupal in my, you know, in my spare time, actually for the first seven years. And after five years, I organized the very first Drupal conference. You know, and back then, I was amazed that, you know, 40 people showed up, that all of a sudden, 40 people thought it was worthwhile to travel to Belgium to talk about Drupal. So fast forward another five years, and now Drupal powers about 1.5% you know, of the web, of all the websites. Uh, it's used, obviously, by hundreds of, of thousands of websites, including large ones like you know, Whitehouse.gov. But unlike most software, it's also developed by thousands of developers all around the world. So it's a little bit like Wikipedia. It's developed by many different people. And it's completely free. And you know, because of all the passion in the Drupal community, and just like Movember, it's also a little bit out of control. So this is some graffiti in Italy. Uh, you know, there's people making those socks and other people actually wearing them. <laughs> uh, some people made, you know, Drupal bacon. It's a good example of how, you know, a passionate community can innovate in ways that you, you know, you can't as an individual. Um, <laughs> you know, some people bike around like this. I don't know this guy. <laughs> Uh, I'll probably be the first person to show pictures of naked men 
uh, at a TED conference. Uh, you know, there's Drupal balloons. <laughs> There's people wearing spandex in public. There's people with Drupal tattoos. And our next conference, you know, we rented the entire Sheraton Hotel in Chicago, which is one of the biggest hotels in Chicago. Um, you know, obviously a big undertaking. But, you know, it, it, it's helped organize by, you know, uh, you know hundreds of, of volunteers that help put this conference together. And I think it's great that we get together because that's how we improve the software. And the software is used by a lot of organizations like Oxfam, Amnesty, Greenpeace, all of those. So, but the lesson that I've you know, sort of extracted out of those two things that you know, you know you're doing things right if it's a little bit out of control. And you know, that seems to be true for Movember, seems to be true for Drupal, seems to be true for you know, many of the, the topics that the people talked about today as well. Um, and so the big question then becomes, you know, how do you need to be out of control? Uh, and, you know, once you're out of control, what is the best way to be out of control? And I think it's actually fairly simple. Um, it's really not that hard. And so one of the things that both of these initiatives have in common is that they have a culture of sharing. And so the best way to get out of control, and you want to be out of control a little bit, is to give up control. You know, it's really hard to be out of control on your own. Um, you could be. But and you're probably a nutcase. So <laughs> if you're going to be out of control, you want to be out of control as a group. You want to be out of, out of control with other people. And also, if the goal is to mobilize people, uh, you know, that's one more reason to, to get other people to share. And so I think Movember actually is a brilliant, brilliant example of that. You know, by growing a mustache, we all sort of bec become walking billboards for this movement. Uh, it forces us to share. Um, it forces us to tell the story of uh, Movember, and I think it's why Movember is taking off in a very big way. Um, here is another example. This is Mark Benioff, who's the CEO of uh, Salesforce. And what he started to do, he started to invite the top uh, users of Chatter, which is a social product that they have, to their executive leading, uh, leadership meeting. So along with the senior vice president, vice presidents, and stuff like that. And I think. You know, he did that because he realized that they're adding as much, as much value as some of those senior vice presidents, although in a different way. And I think it's a great example because it shows us that, you know, all of us can probably, you know, share more and become even more transparent, regardless of what we do today. And also, again, you know, to, to be out of control a little bit, you need to give up some control. You know, just creating this mix of traditional command and control style people combined with some of those uh, social influencers um, as a great way to go about it. Um, and so, of course, there is a difference between creating a great company like Salesforce and creating a movement. Uh, and I think that difference is in, you know, that it's not just about financial gains, it's not just about shareholder value, it's all about getting people to participate in your project because they really deeply care about what you do. And so, um, in the case of Drupal, that's all about the license. The open source license actually encourages participation and you know, encourages people to share as well. And even though some of that participation might look like it's a little bit out of control, it's also a tremendous source of innovation. Um, and the other thing I noticed, and you know, this is the last thing I noticed, is you know, it's not because something is a little bit out of control or you know, completely out of control that there is no control at all. There is always some leadership that's going to be necessary. Uh, and in the case of a movement, it's not about command and control. Uh, I think good leaders are a little bit like superheroes. And I mean that in the following way. If they, ex if they need to exercise some authority, they tend to you know, jump, in, jump in, quickly resolve the problem, and then disappear again, you know, be among uh, the normal people in the community, or you know, be part of the bigger crowds. And the really good leaders, I think, inspire uh, because, uh, for the most part, it is what you do, um, and you know, and why you do things that you know, which is why people will actually follow you. Um, so you know, um, <clears throat> so you know, to sum it up, so you know, what my gin and tonic session, I guess, uh, made me realize is that if you want to change the world you need to enable sharing and participation. And I think you're doing it right 
if you know things are a little bit out of control, because it means people are passionate about what you do, and it means that they're starting to follow your ideas. And so a lot of the people here at TED, you know, shared some incredible stories, uh, ideas that are definitely worth sharing. But I think, well, we haven't necessarily figured out yet as a group, as a community, is how, you know, we can get more people to participate in executing those ideas. And so just wanted to leave it with that as, you know, um, something to think about in the years to come. Thank you.